there's not a lot of things that are going to ruffle me up. But at the same time, because I finally started to like listen and feel my emotions of like, yeah, be, feeling that grief, feeling the sadness, feeling the anger, that's helped me also lean more into the joyful, the happiness, positivity. Welcome to Seriously Catherine, a podcast about taking your business seriously, but not yourself. On this week's episode of Seriously Catherine, my guest is Sarah Hutcherson, the founder of Slow Breathworks. She has over 50 hours of breathwork facilitation training, in addition to being a 200-hour certified yoga teacher. Sarah also pulls from her sustainability MBA and leadership certificate to design seasonal breathing experiences, centering connection between all things. I am so excited for you to hear Sarah's story. Let's get into it. This week's hot take is all about horse racing. You guys, hot off the press, we just found out that Saratoga Springs race course is going to host the Belmont race, which is one of the triple crown races. This is a very big deal. I'm going to sound like an idiot because I'm not like a horse person and I don't know all the things, but I do know as a small business owner in downtown Saratoga Springs, this is good for business. The Belmont race is going to be held on June 8th, which is a Saturday, and Probably leading up to that day and afterwards, it's going to be a frenzy. And I know like some people who are local Saratoga Springs people are like, oh, no, we don't need more horse racing and all the tourists will be in town. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. I love the hustle and bustle and the activity and the local economy. It's, it's good for business. And who doesn't want an extra weekend of horse racing fashion and fascinators and fun dresses and being able to go to the the racetrack a couple weeks early. I love this. So this isn't just for this year. This will be for all of next summer too. So Belmont will be here in 2024 and 2025. So I'm super excited. Now this may impact, I'm gonna have to double check myself, but another big event that's held in June that is one of my favorites is the Cantina Fun Run. It's usually like that first weekend in June. It also happens to be Posey's birthday around her day. So this, I mean, I'm not saying this isn't going to affect me or impact my life in a, in a potential negative way, but overall, sometimes you got to take one for the team, right? So we got to build around this. We got to work around it. It's going to be okay. It's going to be exciting. I think I'm sure rooms are already filling up. I don't have an Airbnb anymore, but if I did, I would be very grateful. And I think it's just overall good, good for business. I can't, impress on that em- enough like that you know we have a we have a lot of small business locally owned businesses that that rely heavily on the tourism industry in Saratoga Springs so if we can extend that i mean yes yes lean in make it work have fun buy a new fascinator <laughs> okay so if you know me you know that i love what i do and i'm a workaholic so if i ever have a chance to get away I can't go too far away without my kids and without being so far away from work. The Adelphi is my go-to. What's really great about the Adelphi is that it has everything you need. It's right there on Broadway. It has a restaurant. It's got the breakfast joint. It's got it all. And the room service is amazing. So last Christmas, we did Christmas Day night at the Adelphi. We booked the Polaris suite, which is really special because it has a hot tub on the balcony. And the kids loved it. It was so much fun. We ordered room service. And it was just like the most special thing. And again, it's got a jacuzzi. I mean, who doesn't want to use a jacuzzi at the Adelphi. If you don't have the opportunity to stay at the Adelphi, you can still go and hang out in their in their lobby or eat at their restaurants. The best sushi in town, by far, I believe, is at the Adelphi. You should get the rainbow roll. You can thank me later. It's delicious. It's absolutely the bomb. If you are local and you need a night off or a night away, don't go too far. Go right there to the Adelphi. Book yourself a room, have dinner there, have breakfast in the morning, and you'll feel like a totally different person when you wake up. So on a regular basis, I am home 
with the kids, more travels work during the week. So at least one day a week on a weekday, I get a babysitter just to give myself a day to do whatever it is I want to do. Sometimes I go to the movie by myself because it's one of my favorite things to do. And no, it's not sad. I enjoy it. I love it. I don't have to share any popcorn or I can get whatever drink I want to. And no one's sticking their like sticky hands in my popcorn bucket. Anyway, Other times I just like do whatever is going on. So last week, Saratoga Living put on their Gives Back event. We talked, we've talked about it here on the podcast, but it's an event that they do every year around Christmas time or on the holiday season where they choose individuals, leaders in the community, in the, in the nonprofit philanthropy industry or who are doing amazing stuff and they sell tickets and the person who sells the most tickets is the winner and all of the proceeds go to whatever organization they represent. So the winner this year was Mary Beth from Franklin Community Center. So Franklin Community Center is this amazing organization right downtown, and there's a food pantry there, and they've been in our in our community for a while now, and they help families in need. They have a lot going on at Franklin Community Center, so I'm really glad that Mary Beth won. She was able to get the most tickets sold, and all this money is going to go to helping families in our community in Saratoga Springs, downtown Saratoga Springs. They have a distribution center where you can go and... I'm sure you can volunteer, but you can also bring household items, sheets, clothing to um, to give to families in need. They have a food pantry there. They also have something called Project Lift, which is an after-school program. I mean, is there anything that they are not covering here? So I'm super glad that, that she won and the money's going to a good cause. And... Congratulations, Mary Beth, on winning. And thanks to everybody who came out. It was such a fun weeknight night out. Okay, I remember when I first met you and you had kind of, maybe you had just moved back or you'd mm-hmm. been back for a little bit. And you were, you kind of told me this story where you like, I moved, decided to move back, but you were so positive about it. You know, <laughs> like I just admire the positivity and the mm-hmm. optimism and yeah. the sense of hope that you had when I met you. And you were just like, yeah. this was, this is the next chapter or the yeah. next journey. Well, I think it was, I, what was it, around February of this year is when I, so I wow. moved, yeah, because I moved here December of last year. Yeah, well, the puppy dog is a milestone. Wa- yes. Wabi. Wabi. Yes. yes. See, yes. I don't have amnesia. <laughs> Wabi, the wobster. Oh. Yeah. She's, she's the best. She's so cute. Yeah. When I came back, I, I was just burnt out. Like, my body from COVID had just really not bumped back the way I wanted. And that was in July. Was that July 2020? Yeah. And then so since then, I had, like, all these different health things going on. And then at the same time, it was like, all right, I had to leave the job that I was in. I was doing sustainability for pet companies, helping them with the sustainable de- development goals. And I was like, this that was the job that I went to grad school for. Like, that's what I mm-hmm. wanted to do. And then my body was just like not responding. My brain, like I would look at the screen. I'd be like, what was I doing? Like the amnesia thing, like that was my brain fog, just oh my. constant. And so all that was happening because I had to choose myself and get better. Oh, my gosh. And bringing it back to the Wobster. When I got her, she just helped me, like, stop thinking solely about myself, right? Yeah. And being like, all right, I got to, like, go take her for a walk, right? And that would be my first goal of the day. And then I'd get up, I'd go. And then my stamina started to build, which was really great. And so I went from, like, being, like, walking literally around the block downtown to being able to walk all the way to Congress Park and all the way back. And now I don't even think about it, right? I'm running. I'm doing things. And being able to have that freedom, like, it just puts a lot of things in perspective. So when you're like, yeah, you're super optimistic, it's like, the fact I can live life again is like, there's not a lot of things that are going to ruffle me up, right? But at the same time, because I finally started to, like, listen and feel my emotions of, like, yeah, feeling that grief, feeling the sadness, feeling the anger, that's helped me also lean more into the joyful, the happiness, positivity. Right. But a lot of my friends from high school don't live around here. And then I wanted to find community, right? And I wanted to figure out the business piece with people that were going through similar, you know, similar tries and tribulations and all that stuff. Yeah. So that was a big piece of why I was doing it. And to the breath work, since 2010, I taught yoga on and off um, on the side of the other jobs I was doing. And so, so breath is like a natural link from that. But to me, the breathing, like my breathing practice and why I'm so obsessed with it is it helped me really like figure things out and move through a very difficult time in my life that we just talked about. Yeah. And so like for me, it's just 
that's I wanted to share that with people. So it made just so much sense. About a year ago, I was having like excruciating back pain. Mm-hmm. And it was so bad and I was so miserable and it was hard for me to just like, I felt yeah. like I tried everything and, and chiropractic would help for a little bit, mm-hmm. but then, you know, it would come back and it just kept coming back, coming back. And then I found um, Movementality, move, I think that's the yeah. name. Have you met? Kira? Kira. I yes. love Kira. She, I mean, she, yeah. So much of that therapy that I did mm-hmm. with her, which is essentially physical therapy, was breathing. And yeah. she would like, Teach, she taught me how to breathe right because I was like a, what do you call this, like a neck breather. Uh-huh. And yeah, um, and yeah, I wasn't taking sure deep do. breaths, strong breaths. The cadence was all f***ed up. And so she like helped me <laughs> to breathe correctly. And I have not had any back pain like in a while. Cure now knock awesome. on freaking wood because now I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning with, <laughs> with, a, with a cramp in my back. But yeah, like, it all went back to... <laughs> back. It resonated with me when we met and you told me, yeah, I help people breathe, right? Mm-hmm. That's not actually like, what's what's your like elevator pitch? Or no, it's pretty, I mean, you're pretty accurate. Yeah. It's, it's just helping people focus on their breath. We breathe about 25,000 times a day, right? Like we're inhaling, exhaling for that amount of time. And it's about bringing your attention, playing with the inhales and exhales for some of those. Because when you do, you start to notice things, start to witness Uh, Maybe it's back pain, right? You start to like witness where you are in your body, how you're holding your body and how you're showing up. I do it all through seasons though. That's really my focus. Um, So when I talked about the sustainability piece of like thinking about inhale, top of the inhale, exhale, bottom of the exhale and relating those to the four seasons. Oh, wow. Yeah. So getting people to think about like their nervous systems as well as in connection to like what's going around right now. So like right now we're what a week and a half to winter solstice. Okay. And Is that the darkest day of the year? Yes. See, I'm so I recently like Mark actually told me this. He he's like you kind of you're kind of negative. <laughs> but like why did I just bring that up? But it's no, it, it is, is the truth. It is. It is the you darkest are in the day of the year. Darkest weeks in many ways. Yeah, right now. So yeah. Okay. Uh, bring 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 some hope to the world here. With no, the the part. Well, the thing is, I, I think in our culture we're very like, oh, we got to be on all the time, right? But like, what you're learning from the wintering right from this darkness. And if you think about it in the breath, right, we're at the end of the exhale right now because fall is the exhale, winter's the hold at the bottom of the exhale, right? So if you inhale and then you exhale, we're like right there and then hold and then that's winter, right? So we're like right, right in that sweet spot. So we're holding our breath. We're about to, yeah. So once that winter solstice hits, that's where you're like holding and on the nervous system level, the hold at the bottom of your exhale is sympathetic, meaning it's fight or flight arousal. Exhale, where we are right now, is still more of that parasympathetic rest and digest. And so when you think about like what's happening with the dark, right, you're starting to move into this place where you're doing the inner work. Mm. You're starting to turn inward, slow down. Well, I mean, right now it's holidays, it's crazy. But like you're really starting to just think about okay, what do I want to bear? Like, what's the stuff that I don't really want to think about? You were talking about, like, what's the negative stuff I don't want to look at? But part of that is that unearthing because then that helps you come spring, right? You're inhaling, you're sympathetics and drive. You got it. Like, if you're constantly in that sympathetic, you're going to be stressed out. You're going to get chronic pain, all the things in your body. So, like, looking to the environment, the seasons could help teach us. Yeah. So is now a time where you're, like, maybe, like, uh, removing the stuff that's not serving you? Mm-hmm. Is that like a yeah. is that a, a underlying theme? Totally, totally. And also, I think like for me, bottom of the exhale ish is all about like that space you've created through the rot. So thinking about like, ooh, what is the stuff that's composting? You see the leaves fall down, right? The leaves are around, and they start to compost, and you're like, ooh, that starts to smell. It's kind of gross, you know. You're like, I don't want to go into that. I'm not jumping into those leaves anymore. And so it's like what's coming out of that? What space is being created that you were like holding on to in those leaves? Mm, this is so fascinating. It's kind of fun, you know? Well, I want to get back to uh, your company. Okay, to Slow and, Breath Works? Yeah, Slow Breath Works mm-hmm. and how you started it and how you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so I started it under a different name January of 2021. And it was really a way for me to like focus on something because at that time I was just doing freelancing after I had to leave um, pet sustainability for just to like start to ca- take care of my body. 
And um, I started to do sessions with other long haulers. So I had created an account. So when I say long hauler, I'm talking about long COVID. COVID. And um, I called it the Long COVID Collective. And it was a space where people would come together and write um, because I love to write. I'm a big writer. And like just express the shit going on like in our bodies and like letting it out. And through that, I started to then bring in the breathing. And so I would offer people, I'd be like, you want to try this breathing thing? Like I have the yoga background and I had just started the certification for the breath work. And that's kind of, that's how it started. And then, but to me, it's birth date because um, I did do an astrology reading for my slow breath works. Oh, I love this. <laughs> uh, so this is, so you are certified. Mm-hmm. Breath, breath coach. Yeah, I call I call myself a breath facilitator. Okay. But I have 50 hours of learned experience in the breath, but I also have a lot of other certifications from yoga in there, so I add that in. Wow. But I spe- I, I'll be honest, there's so many other things that I like rabbit hole on and books I read. Yeah. And, um, and to me, it's like pulling into then from the sustainability background with the nature piece. If you breathe for five minutes a day for a month, You'll start to see shifts in all that. It's it's not even wild. It's just like that makes sense. It makes sense, but it's like we just it's hard to do. I mean, right? It's like easy, but or simple. It's not easy. Well, and that's one thing that always came up in therapy was like, "Have you been breathing?" And I'm like, "Yes, I'm breathing. I'm breathing." And they're like, "Okay, yeah. see, you're not you're not actually breathing." Well, and when you're in the moment, it's like really hard to want to breathe, and also like counterintuitive. Your body is like already going down that sympathetic train. Like you got to let it run and yeah. go. Because then that's like talking about not feeling. Then you're just like doing something so you don't feel versus like doing something so you can like build a habit and like lean into how you want to be and like lean into this lifestyle. The old version of me would have never tried yoga, would have never yeah. tried any of the things that I have explored in the last couple of years. I was just like a go, 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 yeah. power through it, white knuckles, you know, nothing can stop me. And it's like, actually, a lot can stop you. <laughs> and what what was the shift like in that belief or mindset? Well, I think I, the first time I ever taught, taught, uh, did yoga was when I was pregnant. Okay. And I did the prenatal yoga, yeah, yeah. and it was because, I mean, I was having back pain, and I was okay. just, like, having just troubles a little bit just, like, with with <laughs> mobility, and yeah. I shouldn't have had issues. I mean, it was, like, 27, 26? No, it must have been 27. Yeah. But, yeah, so, oh, totally. I mean, that was the first time I ever body. tried yoga. Yeah, it's not about it. Yeah. And then so I— So that opened it up. You're like, oh, okay, this isn't— whatever you thought it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, p- motherhood opened up a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even that sense of, like, you know— I'm I'm not alone. I have yeah. these other people that I need to take care of and be yeah. around for. I mean, I can re- again very different. Well, when but you were just with talking, like my dog. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Well, when you were just talking about how like oh the first step was like walk around the block, and I remember feeling that way, mm-hmm. especially when I first moved here before I opened Paint and Sip. Mark and I were engaged. He was working a lot of hours. I mean, mm-hmm. he was like, you know, we were ships in the night, yep. and it would be like I would wake up and be like, what do I even have to do today? Like I can just stay in bed and do nothing. And it wasn't from a place of like joy. It was like a, mm-hmm. I have no one. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of depressing. Yeah. And slowly and surely, I, you know, you build yourself up the courage to get out and, mm-hmm. and go out into the world. And I started working um, at a boutique on Broadway, the yeah. Saratoga Saddlery, and it gave me like just something to do. And, yeah. and then eventually, you know, we like came up with the idea to do paint and sip. But it's like, it's just, it, that in being in that place, if you don't have the knack to to start putting yourself out there, it can be really scary. Mm-hmm. And it's like doing it in a way that's kind, right? And not like having so much judgment. Mm-hmm. At least, I mean, I'll speak for me. Like that was a big place of coming from like, okay, like you can do this, like go do this new thing. Try one new thing each week. Like, and I would just keep adding on little bits. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, wow, I'm walking all the way around here, right? Or getting it coffee with this person, now going to this networking event. So constantly just like slowly adding to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it grew my window of tolerance, but it also did it in a way that was like loving and self-compassion. Yeah, and um, well, and recognizing that like not everybody's paying attention to what you're doing. Yeah, you also a lot of it's in your head. It's a lot of it's that, like, that narrative, right? right? And so like right. it's just letting go of like, like buying into it Mm -hmm. and saying, okay, like that's the story for today, but being like, okay, that's the story for today. It doesn't have to be 
the story always. Yeah, I mean, I I even kind of experienced this in business ownership and yeah. just being a lot more open and out there and you know, recognizing like, oh, like no one's even going to remember that happened <laughs> or no one's even remember that that story in the press. Um, you know, yeah. people just like they're absorbed they're also busy. Their, they're also busy and they're <laughs> also absorbed in their own stuff. So it's yeah. just like, you know, we all are just doing the best we can. We're all just carrying on and doing the thing. And so, I don't know, parenting to pets for babies and real babies, you know, <laughs> certainly forces you out of that you know, conundrum in your head. And it's like, listen, the yeah. world doesn't revolve around you. We got shit to do. We got kids to feed, dogs to walk, and we <laughs> got to get it going, right? Yeah. Like on with it. Tell us more about Slow Breath <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So what I focus on is I do workshops and I do walks. So um, walks are all about literally walking, but measuring it by your breath versus the steps you're taking. So you'll amble around a garden, amble around like a certain property, that type of thing. And you'll notice things. We have stopping points. And then you practice a different type of breath. So like if you were to do it in palette, you could be like, okay, we're going to the library room. That's why I call the one with the book. Yeah. Um, and you're like, all right, we're going to do our library room breath. And based on what I'm feeling, like to me, I think of a book half open. So to me, that'd be four, two, four. So you inhale for four, hold for two, exhale for four. Okay. And so then like you move on. You're like, okay, now we're going to go into, like we're going to go outside and go on Broadway. And then like you, so the idea is that you're interacting, you're bringing your senses into the present through the breath while also being immersed in the environment that you're in. Cool. Um, which is super fun. So when are these happening? So we, what's awesome about Slow Breath Works is the first one that we did here in the Capital Region was at Pitney Meadows um, and did that in the fall. And now we're going to do another one, um, winter solstice style, so celebrating the darkness. And we're going to be doing that December 17th from 1 to 2. It's a Sunday. Fun. So the darkest week of the year, we come celebrate it, um, drink some tea, breathe, notice like how the gardens, the farms put themselves to rest. Like what's what are lessons we can learn from the vegetables, from the plants? Like we'll get really into. <laughs> I love this. I love it. And yeah. or is it like kid friendly or yeah, all of course. adults? Okay, yeah, cool. Totally. Um, and like we'll ha there's special breaths the kids can do and yeah, that's good. Fun. So that's the walks piece and then workshops. Um, what I've done is much more focused on breathing, just like learning how to build a breathing habit. And I'm moving that slowly. I've done a lot of those more B2C, and I want to move more into B2B into the workplace. Oh, yeah. Because I just, like, how cool would it be if a breath break was similar to a coffee break? Oh. You know, like where people, it's synonymous. Like you go to the coffee station, you're talking shop, and then you're like, oh, we're going to take five breaths together. And then people aren't, don't think you're, you know, some person that's like, what are they, you know, what's going on here? It's like not, it's a common thing. Yes. My hope is that breathing just becomes as common as going for a cup of coffee. It's normalized to say, hey, I'm going to go take a breath break. And they're like, cool, right on, right? Like there's no judgment yes. there. Yes, Well, I know Marcella does this. She yeah. well, well, she's obviously breathing, yes. but <laughs> she does walk. So she's like, I yeah. just need to go walk in nature yeah. or walk around the block. And and that's the, and when you add the breath element too, right? Like there's so many benefits with walking already that we know about. Um, but then when you add the breath to it, right, you're, you're emphasizing down-regulating principles in the body. You're allowing for that parasympathetic to come on, especially when, once you start that ritual, that practice, mm -hmm. you know, five to 10 minutes a day. So it's, like, to me, that's why I think the breath walks are super cool, right? Because it's it's a win-win, you know? Yeah. And and you don't have to go far, right? You can go around that block, and that's a breath walk. It's not right. about how far you're going. Yeah, there's an intentionality about it, mm -hmm. too. And I think if you see more people doing that, then you're more apt to do it, too. Yeah. Well, and, like, yeah, it's not as, like, strange to be like, I'm going to go. And with breathing, what I like about it is because I've taught yoga and, like, workplace and stuff and um, asana. And so when— you know, people, you have to have a certain thing. Like, I remember when I was talking about DSST, the first job I had out of undergrad was, like, we, the students had to change their clothing to a specific type of clothing to do it because it was, like, considered, like, a gym class. And I remember one day I had forgotten my, like, clothes, and so I just wore what I had. And I got so much backlash for it. They're like, we have to change, but you don't, and all this stuff. And that stuck with me because it's, like, there's, you know, you're already having a busy day. You have to change your clothes. You have to go and do this, like, and that. And it's just another item on your to-do list. And with breath, you don't. Like, you can literally do it, like, right now. You could do it on a Zoom meeting. Like, that's the coolest part. Like, if you're starting to feel yourself get frustrated mm -hmm. or fatigued, it's like 
You start to breathe. No one needs to know that you're doing this breathing practice. Um, ideally, we want that to happen someday, but it can be yours and yours only, right? And you identify the breath that works for you. Well, if you're doing it right, no one notices, but, <laughs> right? <laughs> like there's sometimes where, I mean, just even at home and, and here, I'm like, ugh. Oh. Yeah. And be like, are you okay? And it's yeah. like, because I'm not breathing right. Totally. Like I'm holding my breath so much that when I have, and then I have to release it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, is everything okay? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm just breathing. I just took a breath. Yeah. Which is usually, th that's literally what happens. I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just breathing. It's your sign that you're like, oh, we're going out of that. We're going into the high drive right now. Yeah, the more we, tolerance reader. Yes. Yeah. True. That's true. Well, and I think interesting too with, I mean, for my upbringing, like yawning, um, sighing, like is, it's good. I don't want to say it's taboo, but they're like, oh, you're tired if you yawn, right? But like yawning is a sign of your body. It's a release, right? And it's a like when you are breathing and doing these breathing exercises, that's a signal of your parasympathetic system turning on. So like also gurgling, like all the things that are autonomic in your body, once like that will start to happen when you're doing a conscious breathing practice because if it's focused on exhales, because it's going to allow for the rest and digest to turn on, right? Wow. But as a society, we're like, I, I can't breathe. I mean, I, I can't yawn. I can't sigh. Like that's a sign of like almost disrespect. At least that was for me at first. And it was like, no, that's we gotta like release. We gotta let that go because that's allowing for that um, system to continue forward. What are some other like taboo <laughs> or or myths of breathing that myths we need breathing. to destigmatize? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, well. I mean, this may be a little, this is a breath nerd excitement for, okay, like everyone's like, okay, I didn't know this, but I think this is really interesting. So when you inhale, um, I talked about, it's like, you know, sympathetic, turning on, and at the top, it's parasympathetic. So it's actually a spot for you to like rest. And to me, I thought it was going to be something where you're like, oh my God, like I can't, you know, like I thought it would be like igniting that fight or flight sense. That's not really, that's more of like a fun fact that I think. Yeah, I love <laughs> uh, it. Yeah. Um, but another thing is if you think about diaphragm, right? So like a lot of people will talk about belly breathing and it's, I mean, I do too. Um, we're really talking about diaphragmatic breathing and we're talking about that muscle that's in the belly, like right in between, mm. you know, separates digestion in the lungs, but what's happening is when you take a big breath in, sometimes when you move your belly, you're not even moving your diaphragm, especially if you're spending your day like slouched over. Right, that's me. I yeah, which <laughs> which is everyone. I mean, it's not. Um, this feels uncomfortable. I know. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you gotta get you gotta get working on it. I need, a, I need a but what Kira did with, what Kira did with you, right? With the movement, that's the same. You're like starting to really access and move that. So like you can always shuffling, allowing for that diaphragm to start to awaken and it moves like a jellyfish. So it has the same mechanisms of the jellyfish. So if you imagine a jellyfish going like, tsh, tsh, mm. that's what you want the diaphragm to do. So when you inhale, it's coming down. When you exhale, it's coming up. And what's making those lungs inflate and deflate, it's the pressure exchange. Wow. So those are some of my favorite fun facts, but oh. there's a lot of them out there. And the thing is, it's like, it's so new. It's like, there's so many different studies about it. Um, and that's great, but also like we're learning as we go, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, and then there's the actual, you know, physical benefits, but there's also the mental, like there's a lot of things that change in your brain with the waves based if you do nasal breathing versus mouth breathing. Oh, wait, you just sparked this thing that I've been seeing on uh, yeah. social media a lot, like th the ads. nasal breathing or what is it? <laughs> no, it's hostage tape. Hostage oh tape. yeah. So you breathe through your nose. So is breathing through your nose better? better? Yeah. It's according to everything that keeps coming out. Yes, 100%. But um, like this is a thing. Like people wear tape over their yeah. mouths every night. Yeah. It helps it's with sleep apnea. Tape. Yeah. It this helps. is not an ad. <laughs> it helps with sleep apnea. Like, I mean, it's incredible because your nose has all these amazing qualities to it. There's so many nerves in here, right, that connect to like every part of you. And there's nitric oxide that's created, and that's like helping to again relate to the down regulating. And so when you're breathing, you're filtering out all the bacteria, all this stuff. But when you're breathing through your mouth, think about it. It's like all the stuff's just coming back down into the trachea, and it's just going right into the lungs. Oh my gosh! Can you see the shock in my eyes? I know. Like, I'm like, oh my god! So, I need to stop breathing through my mouth. But we breathe. That's why you breathe out. Why should we breathe in through your nose and 
out through your mouth. Uh, better do both both benefit of shul is you can breathe through the nose and exhale through the nose or exhale through the mouth. So exhaling through the mouth, you're going to allow that's more uh, associated with the sigh, the sound. And when you hum, that's stably, um, stimulating your vagus nerve, which is related to helping with achieve rest and digest. So that's why you hear a lot about that. Through the nose is awesome because, again, like I talked about, it's stimulating the getting that nitric oxide going. And from what I know, I don't know all of it, but like it's very much, again, relating to cleansing, getting it out. So when there's a great book called Breath by James Nestor, highly recommend it. It digs into all parts of breathing. Um, but like he did this whole crazy thing where like he wore the tape every day and just saw a shift. His breath slowed down. So that's a big thing is slowing down your breath is really important. Like under to 12 breaths per minute is like incredible. Think about when you're sleeping, you breathe less. Your breaths are slower. Yeah. And then when you're more stressed, what well, happens? Your heart rate comes up. You start to breathe heavier. There's usually more breaths, right? So you want to like move into, so part of the name for slow breath works was that idea of slowing down the breath mm -hmm. because we all breathe too much. Like the New York Times had a cool thing where you would like tap the screen every time you took a full inhale, exhale, and it would show you where your breathing rate was. And a lot of people are over in the like, ah, I'm breathing a lot, you know? And like, so you're functioning, you're just like at a hyper speed. We all breathe, right? Like we're all here, we're humans, we're alive. And I think the breath to me is much more connected to also like how we show up in the world and getting more into that spiritual piece of it and just thinking about like what parts of our lives are not allowing us to breathe, you know, like thinking about social location, thinking about our connection to our ecosystem, ancestors, like that's what I get really excited about. So I love all the science behind it. I'm, I nerd out on that. And I think it's also a really beautiful opportunity to Especially when you're breathing together consciously in a group, you're like, oh, this, like you just start to think about like how you're affecting someone else. You can't not. And I think that's why breathing is becoming more popular after the COVID, after the pandemic, because we had to wear a mask and we're like starting to think about like, oh, my exhale affects your inhale. And wow. So one of the first things I was sort of shocked when I went to Kira was she was like, there's nothing wrong with your body. It's your breathing. Mm -hmm. She's like, that's... I love that. We did a workshop together. That's oh, why it makes you? me so happy. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah to... She's great. And yeah. and so that was just one of those things. Like, I just didn't know that I even had trouble breathing. And she looked at me for like maybe yeah. two seconds and she's like, you're a neck breather. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not breathing deep enough. There was some... There was there was a, a lot of other <laughs> well, things that I wasn't doing right, but I had no idea. Yeah. So what are things that people can recognize in themselves? Or is that something that you do? Do you do like an you you do that, like an assessment of Yes. I only do one on one offering because again, I'm all about the breathing together. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do I focus on helping you build a breathing habit at work. And then like the first one we'll do together is specifically like what's breathing for you? What does it look like in your body? How does it feel? Where is your breath? When I think about, okay, what are the parts of the breath you want to think about? Like, is this wrong? First of all, like the right or wrong thing, I'm like, just know that like, it's, you know how to breathe. You've, you've known that, how to do that from day one. There's just a lot of stuff happening in your life that's maybe bringing the breath out of the belly. So number one is like, are you able to, when you say inhale and exhale, where in your breath, like body is it going? Is it in the chest? chest. Is it in the it's throat? Like my, is it in the belly? Chest. Right now. Yeah. Is that good? It's, it's not good. No, no. <laughs> well, without being in your body and your nervous system, I would say you want to bring it down into the belly. What we were talking about right with that diaphragm, mm -hmm. because that means that diaphragm is moving, which means there's more pressure on the lungs, and therefore you're getting more oxygen into your bloodstream, and you're removing the carbon dioxide more easily, which is as important, because when you breathe out, about like 70% of your toxins, your removal is through that exhale. So how do you breathe deeper? Uh, yeah, that's what you got. It's all about, so what Kira probably helped you with too, is like it's about massaging, opening up that diaphragm. That's a big piece. And it's also about the mind-body connection and starting to practice breathing into your belly. At first, you're going to feel like fish out of water and like, I, where is that, right? It's like almost like when you're riding a bike, like you're like, I don't know how to do this. It's the same principle. you mm -hmm. got to build that neural pathway to get that going. Wow. So yeah. it's like, where in the body is it? Are you breathing through your nose? Are you breathing through your mouth mostly? 
like notice when you wake up in the morning, is your mouth like cottony? Do you, like, do you feel kind of that, um, yeah, the cotton feel? Um, I don't. I feel like, yeah, I'm not. So this is another thing. Like, you know, some people, like, as soon as they wake up, there's like a water glass next to their table for them to like, because yeah. you know, I guess maybe their dry mouth in the mm-hmm. morning. Yes, true. I don't have any of that. I'm like, I just, I, I get up and I, I get up and I start going. And <laughs> you're like, let's go. Ergo I'm, energy. <laughs> well, I'm usually yeah. woken up by yeah. um, my children. Yes. Insisting on something right off the bat. Yeah. They have been lately, like, cuddling in the morning, which is really... Is oh, sort look of, at that. That's the it's winter. really nice. They're coming, coming <gasps> That's in. just, like, natural? I mean, I don't know, but I let's would... Let's go with let's it. Let's go with it, you yeah, know? Think that's about, pretty cool. Think about what, what's happening, you know, like, everyone's hibernating. you got the squirrels are a little less active. I only know that because of Wabi. She's a squirrel hunter, so... Oh, yeah. It's like our walks are much more efficient now yes. about the squirrels. Um, That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I don't know. Just like, like lately, something to think about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, not like, yeah, n- lately they've just been wanting to, like, mm-hmm. in the past, it's like as soon as they wake up, they're like, can I do this? Can I do that? What are we doing? Da-da-da, you know? And yeah. now they've, like, yeah, Ruby, especially. My. I, I need to, like, chill out with Ruby. I think people might be worried about her. She's fine. Okay. She's just, like, a wild child, and she's she's her own person. Mm. Um, but her especially in the morning, she's like, can I get in bed with you? I'm like, yes, you can. This is, like, the You moment. could totally breathe with them in those moments. Like, I mean, co-regulation's already happening, but take, like, five silly breaths together. Like, doesn't have to be serious at all. You make up the names of breaths. Like, I did a workshop where it was with a family. It was with three kiddos. And I literally, like, I went and I had all these props. I had slinkies. I had different stones. I had spritzes and candles. Like, I sent them all these things. And then they came up with some of the best breaths ever. They're like, Simba breath. And I was like, oh, that's a new one. And then I was like, this is a lion's breath. And she's like, actually, let me tell you about all the different roars in Lion King and how they're not really lions. And I was like, okay. Now I know. Wow. But, like, that yeah. playfulness energy is, like, huge. Kids are fun, but, like, <clears throat> what is it about Palette that's really helped you along? I mean, for me, I am someone that I'm, I'm, like, an extroverted introvert. I definitely need to recharge on my own, but I love to be around other people. But for me, it gave me a container to get out there, mm. right? So, like, there were different events to go to and talk to people and have those conversations. So that, like, helped me with my business, right, and to make those connections. And in general, I mean, it's just, like, you come in and you're like, all right, I want to learn. Like, there's this sense of trying new things and throwing spaghetti at the wall. I love saying that. Mm-hmm. And, like, and like that's cool. That's part of it, right? And yeah. not feeling like angst around if it's going to be perfect or not, right? Like kind of letting go of a lot of that conditioning. Um, And I've felt that with the different um, entrepreneurs I've met here is that sense of like, let's try it. Let's see if it works and doing that through collaborations. Mm. So yeah, for me, it's been really awesome. It's like a year in and um, it's helped me a lot with, with connection. And yeah, like I do, I feel grateful for that. Awesome. So it's not just me. <laughs> well, you're, I mean, you're an amazing cherry on top. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it's not just me feeling the impacts of the community. Yeah, no. You I know? mean, I think, well, I what's hard with community, right? I think a lot about this with breath is kind of like we're in such a, where people want to have results, right? Like, this is our KPI. This is what we've done, like, which is beautiful and a big piece. But also it's like, again, it sounds cliche, but it's hard to measure connection, Right. And maybe it's okay. Like that doesn't need to be measured, but it's like through story that I do believe that connection, the benefit of it and collaboration kind of comes to light. Um, So like through the podcast or through like going together and talking at an event, like that's what's helped me kind of show the value. I think, you know, for Palette and for like other things I've done and that it's just that sense of like, this is my story. This is how it's changed. And that's, there's a beauty to that. Like, yeah. You know, like we're always evolving. That's the human of it, right? That's like the breath piece. It just keeps moving forward. And so like how you you change the stories around is kind of like your evolution and that's what you leave. So um, are, do you have any like resources that people can like or assessment to see if they like where they're like what, what sort of like things can you share with the audience to sort of like nugget of working with you? Yeah. Um, well, if you go to my website, uh, you can download. I have like a free breath flow they can find and play with, see how Playlist, it feels to them. Yeah. Um, Is that, that's what you shared with the Airbnb? Oh, that was, yeah. So yeah. I created, uh, yeah, I did a, well, it was flow specific to snacking. 
because it's so important. But yeah, there's one on there that's more around joy because when you elicit certain emotions that affects your breath. So like think about when you feel angry, your breath changes. It's the same thing when you start to feel like when you bring something to your mind's eye, then your breath starts to change. So if you start to think of, you know, your kiddos and they're like playing in the snow, your body feels that. And then it's like, oh, heart rate slows down. Breath starts to go into the belly, a little bit less of that fight or flight happening. So um, a lot of those are focused on listening more of those positive emotions. I'll say that, but all of the emotions oh, are positive. Love it. I have like a tongue in cheek quiz um, on my website. I have to give a shout out to BWB who helped me with my website. It's awesome. And it was, it's all about like, do you breathe? Are you human? Have you like, did you wake up today? And then on there, you can schedule a discovery call with me, like 15 minutes. We can grab coffee, tea, virtually or in person, talk about more breathing. Um, and then, you know, really if you're a workplace or like a retreat center, that's where I can send you. I have like all my one pagers and stuff. But. Oh, cool. So like if you're an entrepreneur and you employ yeah. people that need to learn how to breathe right. Yeah, that's you can really come in and do a workshop for them. Yeah, that's that's what I love. And we can pair it around what season we're in. Again, that's like the big piece to me. And then we'll make sure if you're like, I want my people like to get more focused, you're like, okay, cool. Where are we in the seasons? Like, let's do that in spring then, because that's when that's naturally gonna be happening. We'll focus more on those inhales to upregulate um and really get them into their body. But so fun. Yeah. So to me, it's like my like again, I talk about the breath break that I get really excited about, like at workplace. To me, also like having breath ambassadors right at every place where people are like, "Are you breathing today?" You know, like or like I voted stickers, and it's like I breathe today, and people oh, are like, "Yes!" And then like, yay. I mean, because it's like there's a lot, especially like with everything in the world right now. Like, not everyone has the access to breathe. Like that in itself is something that's very sacred. And it's very human, right? It's the most human thing you can do. And so I just think in this time, we should like, it's beautiful to think about like not only our individual breaths, like when we're taking and learning a breathing ritual, that's having like a collective impact. That's helping everyone start to slow down and think and say, oh, I don't need to react in that way. Let me pause. Let me see the humanness here and just like not take it so seriously. Wow. <laughs> right? Oh, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Do you, you just did that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, Catherine. Seriously, Sarah. Yeah. I love this. Well, thank yeah. you so much for thank being you. here. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. you. This week's Face Palm Mom moment is Ruby. Poor Ruby. She's just got the most stories to talk about. Okay. So just real quick, the story was that I went into parent teacher conference and they were like up for Ruby and they were like, oh, she's so sweet and kind and she's well behaved and she's trying really hard and she's doing well in school. And one of the stories they told me about was that she, about the bat story. So this is just like a retelling of the story. So Ruby was actually not even alive at that point. She was, I was still pregnant for her when this, this scene happened in my life. But she, I guess we retell it so much that she's telling her friends at school about how she had a, a pet bat. She didn't have a pet bat. This bat, like there was, when I was pregnant for Ruby and Posey was like three and a half years old, she was sleeping in my bed. Mark was traveling for work. So I was home alone. And we were replacing the windows in our house. So we had like a piece of tarp over the windows for like a couple of days. Well, it was also, I guess, bat season or like when bats are out and about in upstate New York. And in the middle of the night, I felt a draft. And so I took the blanket to put over me and I hit something. And then it hit the wall and like crawled into the bathroom. Now, at the time we were living in like this very small apartment. So I could like literally touch the bathroom door. Um, and it was a sliding door, like a barn, a barn door. And so I saw this thing crawl on the ground into the bathroom and I freaked out and I hurry quickly like shut the barn door like the bathroom door scooped Posey up because she was sleeping ran into the living room and immediately I was like it was moving too slowly to be a mouse and it was way too, it was too big like the, the like it was like I don't know how to explain it it was like crawling and it was slow moving like it it was sneaky, kind of. Anyway, I've pretty quickly recognized that it might be a bat. And I don't know why, but I had, like, I guess this is, like, a survival, you know, mechanism. But I knew that bats can get through, like, very, very small crevices and cracks and everything. So I quickly shut my bedroom door and then put, like, a blanket and sheet around the around the ground and everything. But I'm starting to freak out. Then I was, like, it was, like, in the middle of the night. So I started Googling, like, what do you do if you have a bat in the house? It was so scary. And so long story short, the contractor at the time that was like coming to my house every morning anyway to like work on the house, I like 
texted him at like 5 a.m. I'm like, you need to get here now because I am stuck out of my bedroom. I am in my underwear because I was sleeping and there is a something, a rat or a bat or a mouse or something in my bathroom. And so you, you got to come over and you got to find it. And he came, they got the bat and you know where the bat was found. The bat was found in the toilet, hanging under the toilet seat. So I'm sorry, but I can't help but be mortified that had I not felt the draft of this bat flying over my head in my bedroom next to my sleeping child, if I wouldn't have hit it, I wouldn't have woken up. And then that bat probably would have ended up in the toilet anyway. And as a very pregnant woman, the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is you got to go to the bathroom, sometimes in the middle of the night. So imagine if I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night and a bat flew up my... (laughs) How mortifying would that be? Anyway, what a moment. What a facepalm mom moment. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you want to connect with me, slide into my DMs on Instagram. My handle is Katherine Hover. 